Hi, fantastic teachers. I hope you're well. Do you sometimes feel bad after making a mistake at school? And does that lead you to overeating to feel better? Well, that's exactly what happened to one of my clients recently. And we thought that it would be a great topic to share with you so that you would know three steps to follow so that you would feel comfortable without overeating. So that's what I've got for you today. I'm inviting you to discover and maybe follow my th simple three-step method so that you will learn what the real cause of the issue was. And then you will be able to take a step back. And maybe you've already experienced that. Whenever we take a step back, it usually provides us with relief. So here's what happened to my client recently. She's a teacher in a secondary school and most, uh, most particularly, most specifically, she's a math teacher. And during a math lesson, she made a mistake that she wrote on the board. Instead, for the sake of simplicity, instead of writing uh, B, she wrote A. And as soon as she noticed she had written A instead of B, she thought, oh, I must be a bad teacher. When she thought I must be a bad teacher because she had written A instead of B, immediately she started feeling ashamed. And so what did she do from that place of shame? Well, she did three main things. The first one is that she drank half a bottle of wine and ate a packet of cookies as soon as she got home. That's the first thing. The second thing is that she kept thinking, she kept spinning, looping the thoughts uh, of what she had done and also the judgment she had for herself. I must be a bad teacher. And the third thing she did was that she didn't work on her yoga mat as she had planned to do. Um, she didn't follow her routine. And so as a result, we could say that because she behaved this way, because she was thinking I must be a bad teacher and feeling so ashamed, the result, the impact that this behavior had on her life was that she was not being good to herself. And what I always find fascinating is that it's not the fact that she wrote A instead of B on the board that drove uh, this uh, behavior and that had this impact in her life. No, it's impossible. Whenever you write something on the board, whether it's right or wrong, all right, it can't make you feel a certain way. It can't make you feel ashamed. It can't make you feel excited or whatever, right? But in this case, it's because she was thinking, I must be a bad teacher, that she felt so ashamed. And so notice that it's because she was thinking, I must be a bad teacher, that she created this impact in her life that she was not being good to herself. The very good news is that it's completely optional, right? She's not, she doesn't have to believe she must be a bad teacher about herself, right? Especially since we've seen that from that thought, I must be a bad teacher, she felt ashamed. And when she felt ashamed, she had a behavior that she did not actually want to have, right? So we can see that it was not helpful at all to her. So let's dive into more details here. What's the problem with the thought, I must be a bad teacher? Well, there are three things that we can point out. The first thing is that she associated I as if I equal bad teacher. It's as if it was part of her DNA, right? When in reality, instead of generalizing and making it, and making it her identity, we could go back to what happened at a specific moment in time. She wrote A, instead of B. That's all that happened. The second thing that we can see is that she had this judgment about herself. Bad. I must be a bad teacher, right? And maybe she thought at some point that judging herself this harshly this way could use, be useful to her. We often have this idea that if I don't point out my, all, my, all of my mistakes, then there's no way I'm going to improve. But what's interesting here is that we can see that the impact is far from being an improvement for her, right? So we can renegotiate, we can reassess 
or definition of bad. The third thing that we can say is that there's this absolute, it's either good or bad. I can be a good teacher if I never make mistakes or I'm only a, a bad teacher, right? There's no th nothing in between. So I like to use the analogy of the switch. The switch means that the light is either on or off. There's nothing in between. We could also use the analogy of the thermostat, right? Or the volume button, right? You can turn it right or turning left, turning up or turning down, right? And maybe it's the same thing. Maybe there's no such thing as a good or a bad teacher, but there's only a spectrum on which you are at some point in time and that you can always go one way or the other, depending on what you want. So what to do now, right? How can we feel peaceful knowing that, yes, she wrote A instead of B? So what I'm offering you today is are three steps. The first one is to, when you notice you're overeating or over drinking or not working out, not following your routine or beating yourself up in your head, it's a sure sign that something's going on for you. So what I could encourage you to do is to just take a pen and paper or your dictaphone or your uh, laptop or whatever suits you, suits you the best and set your timer for just five minutes and do a thought download. Just put on paper whatever is in your mind, right? That's the first step. The second step after noticing could be simply to question. So what I'm going to suggest is that you focus on one sentence from all those thoughts, you had everything you've written, just pick one sentence, right? And ask yourself, what's true about it? What's not true about this sentence? So what questions can you ask yourself when you want to question one sentence that you've picked up? Well, here are three possibilities. The first question you could ask yourself is, okay, what makes a teacher good or bad? You could have two lists, good teacher, bad teacher, and I really want to encourage you to have several items on each side, on each list, right? Not just a good teacher never makes mistakes, right? Because I doubt that such a teacher ever existed, right? A second question you could ask yourself is, who decides whether you're a good or a bad teacher? Who gets to choose? Who gets to define and identify you as good or bad? And the third question could be, okay, knowing that yes, indeed, you wrote A instead of B, and we could see that as a fact, everybody would agree that yes, there was A instead of B written on the board. How do you want to treat yourself knowing that? The third step after noticing and questioning could be deciding. By that, what I mean is that you decide, you may decide to let go of this emotion of shame. And what that means, and what I teach my client, is to observe the energy of shame in your body and take a deep, several deep breaths right? Of course, I teach that into more details to my clients. And if you're interested, please let me know send me a message and I'd be delighted to answer your questions. And here are three thoughts that could help you decide to release, to let go of the thought, I must be a bad teacher and the shame that comes from this thought. So the first thought that you could be thinking could be, I'm feeling a very human emotion called shame and that's okay. The second thought that you could be willing to explore and think of more often could be, of course, I'm feeling ashamed because I'm thinking I must be a bad teacher and it doesn't mean it's true. A third thought that you could be thinking is, I can make a mistake and be a good teacher. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got a lot out of this video. 
and that you're going to use all those tips the next time you feel ashamed because you're thinking, I must be a bad teacher, if you've made a mistake. I wish you a very good rest of your day. Take care. Bye.